Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Nitin Sood and I am a clinical hematologist and a senior consultant in the Department of Hematology at Medanta Hospital in Gurgaon. I am going to start discussing myeloma, current updates in diagnosis and recent response criteria in myeloma. To emphasize my point, let me start by narrating to you the story of a myeloma patient that I diagnosed a couple of years ago. This was a 66-year-old gentleman who was diagnosed with myeloma in 2014. He had presented with generalized fatigue and mild anemia. His hemoglobin had been dropping in the recent times and all investigations that he'd had so far had failed to reveal a reason. This led to a bone marrow which had about 30% plasma cells in it. The light chain analysis was abnormal but there were no myeloma defining features. There was no bone damage, no kidney damage or hypercalcemia. This put us in the classic catch-22 situation. The dilemma that we faced at the time was to whether we wait for complications to happen or do you treat now. Early treatment has its advantages in preventing complications and hitting the disease when it's most vulnerable to treatment in a hope to achieve a deeper and more meaningful response. So what I was hoping to do with my five minutes was to try and convince the audience that the previous criteria for diagnosis of myeloma needed to be updated give out the reasons on why they needed to be modified and at the end discuss a little bit more about monitoring requirements and finally the role of MRD analysis in myeloma disease monitoring. The case for observation was based on these facts. There were no good treatments available for myeloma in the past. There was no evidence of benefit from these treatments and some said why add the side effects of medication to the whole equation if these patients did not need therapy and could be stable for years without treatment. Today in 2017, all these arguments don't hold true. Today we have many drugs to treat myeloma. From immunomodulators to proteasome inhibitors and now antibodies in myeloma, these drugs are very effective and help us achieve deep and meaningful responses. There are more drugs in the pipeline and multiple combinations of these agents which need to be tested and we then understand how to optimally use them sequentially in a manner to use them more efficiently. Published in Blood last year, 2016, this phase 3 trial of 119 patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma, were, patients were randomized to treatment or observation. The long-term follow-up analysis confirms that early treatment with Lendex for high-risk uh, smoldering myeloma translates into a significant benefit in treatment-free survival, but also in a sustained significant prolongation of the overall survival. So this trial, despite all its problems, proves the point that early therapy is not harmful to our patients and may even be beneficial. And the third and the final argument was, we don't know which patients with asymptomatic smoldering myeloma are going to progress to myeloma and which are going to remain stable over the next few years. So this paper from Robert Kyle was published in 2007 in NEGM, which examined the risk of progression of smoldering myeloma into full-blown multiple myeloma needing treatment. The paper produced data which reflects in this curve. This curve shows that smoldering myeloma patients progress to myeloma at the rate of about 10% per year for about the first five years as compared to MGUS which progresses only at the rate of 1%. For the next five years, the rate of progression falls to 3% per year, meaning the first 10 years, two-thirds of patients would have progressed to myeloma and then the risk falls to the MGUS levels which is 1% per year. This led to updates in the diagnostic criteria for myeloma in 2015 and these included new biomarkers that we now knew would alter the disease course in smoldering myeloma. More than 200 myeloma experts were involved in the production of these working group criteria which would include newer biomarkers in the diagnosis of symptomatic myeloma and did not just need the CRAB criteria for treatment of, of myeloma for the first time. The first of these biomarkers is bone marrow plasmacytosis of more than 60%, which was rarely found in smoldering myeloma, but when found signals early onset of end organ damage and all these patients should be regarded as having myeloma requiring therapy, irrespective of presence or absence of end organ damage, which is the CRAB features. This data from Mayo, Mayo Clinic was later validated by the Greek myeloma group. Bone marrow plasma cell analysis should be based on aspirate or biopsy and if a discrepancy exists, then the higher value should be used. Currently, uh, flow-based calculations is not recommended and studies are ongoing to see if this method can be used in the future. The normal free lag chain ratio is 0.26 to 1.65. In clonal plasma cell disorders, this free lag chain ratio is abnormal, indicating excess light chain production. 
The risk of progression of smoldering myeloma with free light chain ratio of greater than 100 and an involved free light chain level of at least 1000 mg per liter was 82% at 2 years and 93% at 3. Based on this data, the researchers concluded that such patients should be regarded as having myeloma requiring therapy. More concerning was the fact that showed that the first sign of progression in these subset of patients was renal impairment and we all knew, we all know that once renal impairment sets in, the prognosis is worse irrespective of correction later on with therapy. Abnormal MRI imaging features in smoldering myeloma including, include both focal and diffuse involvement. However, lately investigators have started to look at the level of involvement by myeloma and the risk of progression. This was published in JSU in 2010 and later again confirmed by the Greek myeloma database. And it shows that the yellow line which shows more than one focal lesion on the MRI has a median progression free survival of about a year and by two years 70% of patients have progressed. Based on these biomarkers, the International Myeloma Working Group published in Lancet Oncology the updated criteria for diagnosis of myeloma. According to this update, it was myeloma defining events versus no myeloma defining events to diagnose multiple myelomas needing treatment. So the updated criteria now read as myeloma defining events to diagnose symptomatic myeloma and differentiate it from smoldering myeloma and MGAS. We now don't have to wait till one of the CRAP criteria are met to start treatment on patients with symptomatic myeloma. More than 60% plasma cells on the marrow, a free light chain ratio of more than 100 and more than one focal bone lesion of more than 5 mm on MRI are enough to indicate a myeloma defining event and qualify a patient for treatment. Amongst all this, we have to remember that one thing that is more important than others and that is judgment. We have to apply our judgment in these situations which are too close to call. We have to remember the criteria are here to help us make a decision and do not by themselves should take precedence over judgment as clinicians. Even when we look at the old definitions we needed to apply judgment, we had to make sure the earlier CRAP criteria, hypercalcemia, renal impairment, anemia, etc. were all attributable to myeloma and not due to another reason. We needed to rely on judgment on the newer criteria similarly and make sure the bone lesions are attributable to myeloma and myeloma being a patchy disease, we have looked at the plasma cell percentage carefully before we make a decision to monitor or to treat. One of the other big changes from the working group has been defining myeloma bone disease. Traditionally, this was done using skeletal surveys. In 2013, a systematic review compared modern imaging methods including MRI, FDG PET scans, PET CTs and whole body CTs with skeletal surveys. Newer imaging techniques have greater sensitivity for detection of myeloma bone lesions with as many as 80% more lesions detected by newer techniques. This updated IMWG criteria now clarifies that clear evidence of one or more sites of osteolytic bone destruction of more than 5 mm on CT or on PET CT does fulfill the requirements of CRAB irrespective of whether these lesions can be visualized on radiographs of the corresponding sites.